there are more than a trillion ways in which I can scramble this Rubik's Cube. And with that said, there are more than a trillion ways to solve it back. But back in 2014, when I first learned to solve this cube, I only knew one method. Yes, just one method to solve it. And I was so used to with that single method that till yesterday, I was solving this cube using the same method which I was using since last six years. But this was till yesterday and not today. Because today, I decided to learn the other ways to solve this problem which I was missing out on since last six years. I mean, just imagine how fast I could solve this problem if I knew most of the ways to solve it. Well, this is just one problem amongst many in this world and certainly not of any considerable importance. But with this understanding that there are trillions of other ways to solve one single problem, a really important question comes to my mind that just like this problem, there are many other problems in this world. Some of them are really crucial, which must be solved as early as possible. And by problem, it can be anything from simple math problem, a puzzle to some of the most intricate social problem of poverty and unemployment. So for all those crucial problems, just like what I did with the Rubik's Cube, aren't we all getting used to by one single solution that we are missing out on other potential solutions? Aren't we all just doing that? So back in 2018, when I first realized the possibilities I was missing out on, I thought it was time for me to act and discover the other potential solutions of some of the most crucial problems in this world. But before that, I had to select a problem to which I will dedicate the coming years of my life. And knowing the fact that we are at the verge of sixth mass extinction, where 200 species are going extinct per day, Average global temperature is rapidly increasing. Glaciers are melting. Sea levels are rising. But the worst of all, amid this global crisis, there are very few who are talking about it. So I could not think of any other problem except climate change. Now that I had decided the problem, it was time for me to understand and find the already predominant solution in the society. That will eventually help me find other potential solutions. So I started my search to find out the major approaches and major solutions employed by the frontliners to solve the problem of climate change. I talked to many experts and many climate activists and most of them had a common answer that was to force our leaders to make more climate centric laws. Most of them had this common answer which supposedly was the predominating solution. Now that I know the predominant solution in order to find the other potential solution of this problem it's important to understand the very core reason or outcome of making more climate centric laws. Well, I didn't have an answer to that question. So I went to an expert and asked that what is the very core reason or let's say outcome of making more climate centric norms. And the answer he gave was quite simple. He said that will ultimately change attitude and action of our people. With that, a very important question comes to my mind that is changing a law or appealing our leaders to change our law. The only way to change people's attitude towards climate change? The answer is definitely no. From a psychological point of view, there are three other ways, apart from law, that can help in changing people's attitude towards climate change. With that said, I don't mean to uh, oppose the already existing method of uh, climate strike and appealing our leaders to change law. I don't mean to oppose that. In fact, I agree, it is one of the most effective method of all. But it's effective only if our leaders are listening to our appeals. And Seen the recent example of Erin Molin, I don't think this method is working well. So I thought why not focus on other three options that I had, the method of group discussion, public awareness and education for attitude change. So what I'm about to share is not just my personal story, rather look at it as a model which anyone in any part of the world can use for their regions. This model mainly employs the method of group discussion, public awareness and education for attitude change towards climate emergency. So our focus group for this model is the young population who are the worst affected by climate change, not only in short term, but also in long term. And other financial and geographical differences make the situation even worse for the underprivileged. This model is based on a network of school connected through a single organization that is the national operator of the entire system. This organization is responsible to conduct different activities with the main objective to bring awareness amongst youth about climate change. This includes many interactive activities that employs all the three methods of attitude change. 
we conduct competitions among schools say which school can organize more cleanliness drives regularly or competition can be of brainstorming about an idea and innovative substitute of single use plastic products and not only competition we also organize regular group discussion on both grassroots levels in school itself and in state and national level where student representatives from each school come together and raise their concerns for climate change involving them in all these activities in their day to day life will help us change their attitude towards climate change and all this is achieved without doing any climate strikes or making useless appeals to our leaders rather it's achieved by simply changing our focus on the other three options that we had the other three potential solutions which were missing since last 6 years also incentives are given to students in school for their efforts in this direction incentives like cash prize or national recognition as eco school and eco warrior for school and students respectively and as our focus group are the young kids it's ultimately they the young population who are about to be the future policy makers the future entrepreneurs and ultimately the one who will take our mankind forward with all these activities a concern for climate change will become an integral part of a student's life which will not only make them more responsible for our society this will also make them more responsible for our planet thank you